Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We would like to welcome each and every one of you to Light of the World Christian Tabernacle International uh, Wednesday night virtual Bible study. We are thankful to God that he has given us an opportunity to come together and to study the word of God for ourselves. It's a privilege to be able to be on tonight uh, virtually to be able to share the word of God. And as we discuss and have um, chat uh, in the comments, uh, about what God is doing, even as it relates to this Bible study. We thank God that he gives us the freedom and the privilege to be able to do so. So I'm thankful uh, for this Wednesday evening that we get to share together and to come together and to honor God for what God is doing. Uh, we're excited that each of you are jumping on. Uh, so I see many of you are starting to jump on. So you know how we do. We want to make sure that we're able to share, comment, like, uh, let others know that we're on uh, and that we're able to be a part of this virtual Bible study. So please, please do so. Like, comment, share. Uh, go to somebody's um, page, share the link, let them know, hey, we're on uh, on your Facebook page. Share it as many times so that we can continue to build an audience um, and all of the different platforms that we're on. We're having an opportunity to be able to do so. So it's a blessing to be able to use all of the different platforms that he has given us uh, to be able to share the gospel message, the word of God, uh, which will bring uh, revelation and edification to all of our lives if we apply the word of God appropriately. Uh, so we're thankful. Also, we wanna make sure that you're able to give throughout the Bible study. So if there are multiple ways you can give our app, push pay, text to give, uh, or you can send uh, a check by mail to the address below on the screen. So uh, we wanna make sure that we have as many, many uh, opportunities to be able to engage and worship through our giving uh, online. And we thank you for uh, even taking the time uh, to be able to be a part of this Bible study. So I'm excited. Um, it's already 7.03. I want to jump into the Bible study on tonight. But listen, uh, if you would continue to like, comment, share, let somebody on else know that we're on live and that we're able to come together and to study the word of God together. Uh, we're going to go into a word of prayer. And then after we go into the word of prayer, then we'll have an opportunity to jump right into the Bible study. Many of you are already jumping on and commenting. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being a part of uh, the Light of the World uh, virtual Bible study. Uh, whether, whatever platform you're on, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or IG, uh, we're thankful that you're on and being able to uh, engage with us uh, through uh, the Bible study. Amen. So let's start with a word of prayer and then we'll jump right into um, our uh, Bible study. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us uh, to come together and to study your word, even in this virtual space. Father, what a privilege and honor it is uh, to op open up your holy writ and to gain wisdom, knowledge, edification, revelation from your word. Uh, and God, we pray that uh, something said tonight will bless us, will uh, spur us to good works, will give us some challenging uh, uh, admonishment, but then also give us an opportunity to be inspired. Uh, so God, I thank you uh, that your word will always bring light uh, in the midst of darkness. Your word will also give clarity and understanding, uh, principles and precepts uh, and statutes and, and, and standards that will help us to grow uh, to become more like you. So God, we thank you uh, that you would give us this privilege to do so. Uh, thank you for all of the attendees that are under the sound of my voice that are listening wherever they are uh, in virtual land. Uh, God, I pray that you would strengthen them, that you would uh, edify their spirits, let uh, their hearts be uh, drawn even the more towards you through this Bible study. God, we want to draw closer and closer to you. We want to seek your face. Uh, through your word. We want to gain intimate uh, relationship, communion, a closeness with you, God, and we want to be close in proximity to you, your presence. And so, God, we thank you that you will bless us in this time to be able to come together and to study your word, to give us that closeness 
uh, you are, your word is who you are, you are the word. And so uh, when we're reading your word, we're getting all that you are uh, to be deposited in our spirit. So we thank you. Now bless this time as we come together, uh, give us clarity, give us uh, breakthrough, give us inspiration, uh, and do all that you can do only by the power of your spirit uh, and allow your spirit to come alongside and assist us uh, to bring us in the knowledge of all truth. This is our prayer, uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. In your son, Jesus the Christ's name, we do pray. And the people of God say, amen. Amen. Um, and so so we're, we're, we're um, we've been studying the book of Genesis. We've had different detours along the way. We would uh, of course, during our Resurrection Sunday, we preach, of course, the cross, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, we always have that opportunity to uh, continue to build and grow who we are. Uh, and um, and then last week, before this past week, we just had a worship experience in God, uh, where God showed up, where we were able to give God glory and praise. There were some words of encouragement. Uh, but but God gave us the ability to praise him together. And even on last week, um, we had an opportunity to just, it was just a festive Sunday. Uh, many, um, who, there was, there was you know, Stockbridge High School marching band was a part. Uh, we had um, the licensing of uh, Pastor Jay um, and, and so our youth pastor. Um, and, and we just had an opportunity to fellowship. Uh, we had the baptism of, of a young lady. Uh, we had members join the church. One of the things that I think, um, even as I relate to uh, the overall worship experience, is that we want it to be something that God shows up that is fresh, is live, that God will renew lives, the hearts will be changed. People will begin to see that God is working in uh, the life of Light of the World Christian Tabernacle International. And so God has been blessing us and showing up and giving us uh, inspiration and edification and helping us to see that he has so much in store for those who are willing uh, and intentional about their personal relationship with God. And so, so I'm thankful that we had the opportunity to come together, that we're, we're on live together. Uh, and we'll always continue to keep up um, um, Archbishop Ruth and the team and delegation that's, that's in West Africa. I see she's on, um, um, and and so they're headed, they're in Liberia, um, and they just finished Liberia, and now they're headed to uh, Nigeria. So we're thankful uh, for what God is doing uh, through the life of Archbishop Ruth and uh, the team and the delegation that's with her as well. So we're thankful. Uh, that God continues to bless their travel uh, as they continue to do ministry and work uh, in uh, West Africa. And we're thankful for what God is doing. Uh, so let's jump into uh, the Bible study. Let's jump into the Bible study. I wanted to kind of share some of the names that we talked about in chapter 26 of Genesis. Uh, we talked about even um, Isaac as Isaac uh, a famine came into the land with Isaac when we read that um, and, and we see some things that happened that were familiar to us because they were some of the same things that Abraham did, uh, that Abraham lied when he was in uh, Egypt and, uh, and, and he lied saying that Sarah was his sister. Well, also, too, when the scripture says when there was a famine in the land, um, Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you of, sojourn in this land, um, and I will be with you and will bless you for you and your seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Uh, verse four, and I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven and will give to you seed all um, to your seed, all these countries. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge 
my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And, and so what we see, even in the scripture that, and, and I preach from the topic on this past Sunday, the promise still stands, the promise still stands. And what that means in essence is that God had made a promise to Abraham, but Abraham now was with the ancestors. He was with uh, his his brethren. He was with, uh, uh, and, and he was with his wife in the, the cave of Machpelah. And so, so now, so now the promise does not leave after Abraham is gone, but the promise is still in the seed of Isaac. So when God speaks to Abraham, God makes a promise in the covenant, which is an everlasting promise to Abraham. But now Isaac is the beneficiary of that promise. And so in the seed, Isaac Re continues to bear the promise. He continues to bear the promise. And so the promise still stands. Now, what I love about the scripture is that even when Isaac made the same mistake that Abraham made when he was in the, the, the region of Gerar and the men started inquiring about his wife, Rebecca, because she looked good. She was fine, y'all. And, and now he was afraid for his life that the men will come and take Rebecca from him and kill him. So he lies and says that Rebecca is his sister. And, and we have to be careful. I said this even on this past, past uh, Sunday that we can't let some of the same sins of the father come down to the children. That we have to learn the lessons so that we can break those those issues or those habits or those curses and that that we can follow in the suit of believing and knowing that God is with us and we don't have to lie or we don't have to be afraid of the people who are in the land because God is with us. That is the most important thing that we can always come to a place of understanding that God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Nothing can stop the plan of God. When God establishes a plan, when God establishes a destiny in the life, yeah, there may be some zigzag and there may be some ups and some downs, but God's plan and destiny will come into the life of the believer who is following after God. And we don't have to worry about how it's going to end up because God, as the scripture says in Jeremiah, that I know the thoughts that I think towards you, plans to prosper you and not to harm to you and give you a future and a hope. And so we, we, we have to always be engaged in that process of knowing that God is with us. And so when there is a moment of temptation, we can also learn from the mistakes that were made and we don't have to go through those same mistakes in order for us to continue to move forward. I think one of the biggest problems we have is we think a lot of times experience is the best teacher. No, experience is the best te is not the best teacher. It's learning from the experiences of others so that you don't have to go into the same thing that uh, others are going through. And so you're willing to um, learn from the mistakes that other people have made, learn from some of the things that others have gone through. And you don't have to go through them yourself, but if you're willing to learn and get the information that you need to get, uh, then you can continue to move forward. And I believe that in most of these issues or most of these times, a lot of times we, we if we just get the lesson and learn, and we can learn from the word of God. We don't have to go through some of the same things if we would really take the word of God seriously and learn from what God is saying through his word and take those principles and apply them to our lives, our lives, won't, we won't have to go through the consequences of making bad choices and decisions. And we can take some of the principles and some of the uh, uh, lessons that were learned in the scripture and don't have to go through them. I don't wanna go through everything. I don't want to go through all the experiences that others have gone through. I want to be able to take the lesson that was learned from them and apply it to my life so that I don't have to go through it, right? And so, so, but, but Isaac didn't learn from the issue of what his father went through. 
But even in the midst of that, God's promise still <clears throat> was with was with Isaac on behalf of Abraham. That the promise still stood in the midst of mistakes, in the midst of failures, that God was still with Isaac because God had promised and made an everlasting covenant with Abraham. So I like that. I like that. And even when uh, uh, Isaac was now in the land for a while and, and when he got to the point of where where he was with his wife, Rebecca, and, and, and the men saw, uh, or the king Abimelech saw that he was with his wife in a way that wouldn't be, that he wouldn't be with his sister. He was like, hold on, what is, the, what is this thing you're doing? Is she not, she must be your wife. She can't be your sister if you acting like that with her. And, and he said, what is this thing you've done, this guilt you've brought upon us? So he forbade all of the men to not be with or do anything with, with Isaac, to not kill Isaac, to not kill Isaac, and to also not touch Rebekah. And God continued to prosper him in that land, and God prospered him so much till the Philistines envied Isaac, Isaac. And, and, and look, I, I wanted to even share this with you all, that the Bible says that, um, that Isaac sold in the land and reaped a hundredfold in that same year. And God blessed Isaac tremendously. God blessed Isaac so much God blessed him. He received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And it wasn't because uh, the blessing was just about Isaac. The, the blessing came as a result of the promise being handed down from God to Abraham. And now Isaac is reaping the benefits of the promise that God made with Abraham that the seed and the same thing that God said to Abraham was the same thing that God said to Isaac. The promise still stands. Now, now I, I want to I wanna jump, jump away from this just for a brief moment and go back to chapter 25 because I skipped over chapter 25 to jump to 26 because I felt like God was leading me to speak this to the church uh, on Sunday about chapter 26, but I want to go back to chapter 25 real quick because I want us to kind of look at, at some things that took place. Look at some things that took place in chapter 25. And when we go to chapter 25 of Genesis, verse 1 reads this way. It says, then Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan begat Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Letushim, Lemamim, and the sons of Midan were Ephav, Ephur, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Katira, and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. I want to even just stop right there, because this even further continues to express that although Abraham married after Sarah had died and took a wife named Keturah and had more sons, the sons that he had did not usurp the promise that God had gave his son, Isaac. And so God was still with Isaac, even though Abraham got married again and had more children. Many of us don't always talk about that Abraham, after Sarah, had another wife named Keturah and had more children. We don't talk about that. 
but 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 what it does say is that God allowed Abraham in verse number um five that Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. So all of his property, all of his possessions still belong to Isaac because Isaac was the promised heir that God had established for Abraham. And then, although he gave good gifts to the other sons, they could not compare to the, the heir that was in line of Isaac. And what that means is that uh, as the heir, you 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 get a you get greater portion. You the the blessing comes through you as the as the heir, uh, the oldest heir. And and even though uh, Ishmael was there, and God allowed Ishmael to still be blessed, but Ishmael was not the heir between Abraham and Sarah because the Abra the promise was made to Abraham and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, and the promised child came through Abraham and Sarah, all right? So now when we get to uh, the next verse, verse number seven, it says, verse number seven of chapter 25, this is the sum of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age. An old man full of years and was gathered to his people. And his son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of hell. Y'all remember that? In, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 23, um, there Abraham was buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt at Beer Lahai Roy. So now we, we see that Abraham goes back. Abraham is buried with his wife, Sarah, in the cave of Machpelah that he bought from the Hittite, Zohar the Hittite, in the field that he purchased from the sons of Heth. So he was buried in the cave of Machpelah, all right, with his wife, Sarah. We don't hear anything else specifically about uh, the wife, Keturah, and, and the sons, besides them getting the gifts, uh, but but we don't hear anything else about that. And so I'm not going to speculate or give uh, a conjecture about what took place with the rest. God, the, the scripture tells what happened. They got gifts, and but, but the possession belonged to Isaac. And I like that because uh, Isaac was the true bloodline. The bloodline was in Isaac. The bloodline was in Isaac. Thank you. Thank you for that. The true bloodline was Isaac. Uh, uh, and, and so so when we think when we see that, we have to understand that this is where it is. This is where it is. Now, when we get to the verse number 12 of chapter 25, God blesses us to get some more insight into Ishmael. Now, obviously, Ishmael had done left and went. Um, and you remember when Sarah got upset and she wanted Hagar to leave um, because uh, 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 Ishmael was 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 picking on Isaac, and 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 so she wanted she wanted Ishmael to leave, but Abraham loved of Ishmael too as well, and he didn't want his son to be uh, gone. But God gave. Abraham peace to go ahead and let Hagar and Ishmael go, but we see that Ishmael comes back at the burial of his father, Abraham. He comes back at the burial of his father, Abraham. He pays homage and respect to his father, Abraham. So now look at this in verse number 12. 
the scripture now goes through genealogy. I always want people to understand there are gems and nuggets and jewels in genealogies. Don't ever, you know, a lot of times we don't want to read the genealogy of this person or that person in the Bible, but there are gems and nuggets and jewels in genealogies. So it says this, the family of Ishmael and Isaac. Now this is the genealogy of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah made Sarah, servant bore to Abraham. And these were the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael was Nebajoth, then Kedar, then um, Adbil, then Missam, then Mishmam, then Duma, um, Massa, Hadar, Tima, Jetur, Nefish, and Kadima. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these were their names by their towns and their settlements. Twelve princes according to their nations. These were the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. They dwelt from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt, as you go towards Assyria. He died in the presence of his, all of his brethren. Now, when you look at this and you see, uh, 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 we should always take notice. We should always take notice. We should always take notice of the names and uh, the individuals when they give genealogies, because when you go further in scripture, you're beginning to see some of those names pop up as regions and nations and lands. And so, so what I love about this is, uh, um, and, I, and I like this, uh, Sister ba I like what you said, Sister Baz. Um, th this reminds us to be patient and wait on God in his timing, not ours. Because if we don't wait on God and we try to do things in our own timing, we can end up producing some Ishmael's issues in our lives because we were impatient and we didn't want to wait on God. But God was still, and I like that, um, uh, uh, Sister Maxwell, she said, but God still blessed Abraham, Ishmael also. God blessed Ishmael also because he was a descendant of Abraham. God's blessing was on Abraham's life. And even though Abraham did not patiently wait with Sarah to have the promised child Isaac and they created Ishmael, God still was with Ishmael. But in, but if you look in, uh, as it states in Genesis chapter 17, that there were so many things that were going to happen uh, as a result of, of, of Ishmael in Genesis chapter 17, around verse 20, God said that he was going to have um, that he was going to have 12 princes. Ishmael was going to have 12 princes. That's what it says in Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you because behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget 12 princes and I will make him a great nation, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac. That's in Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. But even in Genesis chapter 16, when, when Hagar has um, Ishmael, the Lord, uh, the Lord angel came to uh, Hagar, behold, you are with child, you shall bear a son, you shall call his name Ishmael. This is verse number 11 of Genesis chapter 16, because the Lord has heard your affliction he shall be a wild man, his, his hand shall be against every man, and every man hand against him, and he shall dwell in the, pre in the presence of all his brethren, right? So you see all of that, and then when you go, you go from Genesis chapter 16, verse 11 and 12, to Genesis chapter 17, verse number 20, 
to going all the way back to where we are now in Genesis chapter 25, where after he dies, what does the scripture say? He dies in the presence of all his brethren. He dies in the presence of all his brethren, just as what the scripture says in Genesis chapter 16, verse number 12. So God's word continues to be consistent and the promise that God makes, God continues to be consistent in his word. Ishmael was blessed by God, but the covenant wasn't with Ishmael. The covenant was with Isaac. The covenant was with Isaac and Isaac and God will not change his covenant for any of us. Whether we plead, whether we beg, God will not change what he wants to do in the life of individuals, no matter how we feel about it or what our opinion is on it. We just got to trust and know that whenever God makes a decision, that decision is final. That decision is a decision that did not need any of us being able to add to it, but God's, whatever God says, it's going to happen. And I like that. God's word will come to pass. God's word will come to pass. So we got to trust and believe that even when it's not happening right at that particular moment, we still got to trust that God will never come short of his word. So then when we, when we get and continue on chapter 25, we get to verse number 19. After God, uh, after the scripture speaks on the genealogy of Ishmael, now the scripture speaks on the genealogy of Isaac. Verse number one, I'm a 19 of, of, of chapter 25. Verse number 19 of chapter 25. Look at what it says. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as his wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. Now, Isaac, I love this, pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Can we just stop right there and pause and just, just really begin to look at this? Isaac marries Rebecca based on God speaking to Abraham and telling his servant Eleazar to go find a wife for Isaac. And we talked about everything that took place in Eleazar's now quest to now do what his master had told him to do, that God would grant success with his master Abraham and that Isaac would find a, a, that a wife would be chosen by the servant for his, his master's son, Isaac. Abraham didn't want him to, to, to find a wife in the land that they were in, but wanted them to go back to his father's uh, house to find a wife for Isaac. He didn't want Isaac to go to that land either. But there had to be a level of trust that Abraham even had in the servant that the servant would go in the way, as Abraham said to the servant, that the angels would go before him and prepare the way. And that when he prays the prayer that he would find the wife for Isaac, all of the criteria is met for Rebecca to even come into view, for Rebecca to be Abraham um, Isaac's wife. And then what I love about Rebecca, Rebecca took initiative. Rebecca not only gave him water, but gave the water to the camels and was willing to travel back to the land where Abraham was and Isaac was for Isaac and Rebecca to be married. Now, that's good. I mean, there's so many nuggets of wisdom 
in all of that. There's so many nuggets in all of that. All of that. But God was with the, the servant Eleazar because God was with Abraham. God was with Abraham. God was also with Isaac. So now we see that that he was 40 years old when he when Rebecca becomes his wife. But she was barren. Oh my goodness. Can we just stop right there and think about that? The Isaac, the the the, the promise that God gives to Abraham that Abraham was going to have a seed and his seed shall be numerous upon the earth. And then all of a sudden now Isaac marries Rebecca and then you think everything is all good. That everything is going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. But Rebecca is barren. What happens in a situation where you've done what God has told you to do and it still seems like that situation is not producing anything? Do you stop? Do you throw in the towel? Or do you pray to the God who is able to unstop all things? What I love about this is that Abraham, it, well, Isaac takes the mindset to not entreat nobody else, but he entreats the one who can open up the womb of Rebecca. The Bible says he prays to God. He pleads with the Lord for his wife. He goes to the source. He goes to the one who has the ability to handle the situation that he is in, the predicament that he's in. He's married to Rebecca. God has blessed the entire situation. God has blessed the entire situation. And now he's in a position. He's with his wife and his wife is barren. Now, the question would come to my mind, well, God, if I'm following you and it seems like everything is working the way I've done, the way I want it, the way you wanted me to do, and then all of a sudden, now there's a stop, there's a stopping and what's taking place. Why is this happening? Could it be that God wants to see if we're going to trust him more than what we see in our in our personal predicaments or our personal situation. Do we trust that that whatever God has said that it will come to pass? So Isaac prays earnestly, pleads with God, and God hears Isaac's prayer. God hears Isaac's prayer. That, that that blessed me right there, that, that God heard the prayer of Isaac when he pleads earnestly with God on behalf of his wife, Rebecca. He pleads because she was barren. This is verse number 21. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. What I love about that, that did not stop them from doing what they needed to do in order for the child to be born. They still had to go through the act, just like Abraham and Sarah had to go through the act. They still went through the act. And they conceived. And the Bible says in verse number 22, but the children, verse number 22 of, of chapter 25, but the children and the children struggled or strived uh, together inside her, inside the womb. They were, they were struggling inside the room. She felt like something was going on. Something was going on. Something was going on. I like that. Uh, uh, to Cynthia, she said the same thing that happened with Sarah was the same thing that happened with Rebecca, right? Right? And I like that. It's only a test. Will you remain faithful? Would Isaac follow Abraham by producing children outside of what God said? That's good. 
That's good. That's good. Will, will he follow in the same footsteps of his father by now having a child outside of the promise? No, he prays to God. So, so this is what I want y'all to see, because although Isaac made a mistake in chapter 26 by lying and saying that Rebecca was his wife, was his sister instead of his wife, he didn't do what his father did when his wife was barren by having a child outside of their marriage. <laughs> so, so, so this lets me know, this lets me know right here that there will be moments in our lives where we learn some things and where we still make some mistakes, but God is still faithful in the midst of it all. That blesses me. That sometimes I'm going to get it right, and sometimes I may get it wrong, but if I still know where my help comes from, and I always entreat God, even when I make mistakes, that God's will still will be performed in my life. Isaac got this part right in chapter 25, where he didn't go outside to have a child, but what he did was he in inquired of the Lord and pleaded with the Lord that God will open up Rebecca's womb. Right? So, so now she's conceived. Verse number 21, now she conceived. Verse number 22 of chapter 25. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, if all is well, why am I like this? In other words, she's trying to figure this out. What is going on in me? What is going on in me? What is going on, on in me? And a uh, description in the King James, it says, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And so she went to inquire of the Lord. And, 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 and in the midst, listen, when you don't understand something, you don't have a clue of what's going on and you notice something is different and something uh, is just happening, don't seek the advice of everybody. Go to God. Go to God. Go to God. She inquired of the Lord and the Lord said to her, verse number 23, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So verse 24, so when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed, there were twins in the womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Look at scripture. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore him. Now, think about that. Y'all remember the scripture in previous that Isaac was 40 years old when he had when he married Rebecca. And it took 20 years from the time that he married Rebecca to the time they have Esau and Jacob. 20 years of being married together before they have their first child. That's a lot. That's a lot. She was barren for 20 years of their marriage. And, and then I, Isaac prays to God that God would open up her room. And then she now bears two children, twins, one red and hairy, like a garment all over named Esau, and a brother who was already fighting trying to get what he, he thought was his, named Jacob, grabbing the heel of his brother. 
The Bible says in verse 27, so the boys grew. And Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man <laughs> dwelling in the tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Look at that. Isaac loved Esau. Rebecca loved Jacob. Now, y'all got to get this. Rebecca understands what happened as a result of her inquiring uh, what was taking place in her womb when God, in verse number 23, tells her that two nations are in the womb, two peoples shall be separated from your body, one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So she knows all of this. She knows all of this that is happening because God has given a revelation of what is taking place in the womb, right? So now, verse number 29 of chapter 25 reads this way. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Do y'all hear what I just said? Y'all see this, what's taking place. His name is called Edom because he's weary. His name is called Edom because he's weary. That's going to come back. That's going to come back. We got to always know that scripture has a way to get this. So now, now, and, and, and you, you, you got to understand. So verse number 20, please feed me some of that stew for I am weary. Therefore, his name is called Esau, Edom. Verse 31, but Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Sell me your birthright as of this day. So now Jacob is already thinking about a ploy to get the birthright. He's been pulling at the heels since the day they came out the womb. He's been wanting to be in a position of having the birthright since the day they came out of the womb. And now Jacob sees an, an opportunity. He sees an opportunity to now get what he's been wanting since day one. The Bible says in verse number 32, and Esau said, look, I'm about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Wow. Then Jacob, verse 33 says, swear to me of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. I, I, I want to just really unpack this a little bit. Unpack. You got to understand that birthright was a special honor to be born first, was a special honor that was given to the firstborn. This was something that was given. It included the double portion. This was the double portion that was always given to the older son. A double portion was always given to the older son. So that the, the older son had a larger portion because the firstborn had a blessing of having the birthright. But I want you to think about this in the mindset of Esau. Esau did not have enough foresight to understand that although he was feeling uh, some level of desire at that moment, the desire at that moment, if you now don't fully take an understanding of what could take place by me being impulsive and me wanting to get what I want right now, I could end up messing my life up in the end. But he didn't even value the birthright. He didn't even value the birthright that was given to him as the older eldest son. 
the blessing, he did not value the blessing that was on his life as being the oldest son. Understand this. And, and here's the thing. Don't make a permanent sit decision in a temporary situation. He was temporarily hungry. All he had to do was wait and get some food. If he was hungry, he just need to wait. Jacob saw the opportunity. His name means to plant, Sir Planter. His name means to a uh, trickster. I like that, Cynthia Care. His name means that he would he he's a he's a trickster. He's a shyster. That's what Jacob. His name means means Sir Planter, trickster, shyster, schemer. Right. So now, Jacob sees the opportunity to now use this moment as a moment to trick Esau out of his birthright. But here's the thing. Esau didn't have to fall for the trick. Esau had the ability to just have some level of restraint and value the blessing of being the oldest son and not get so enamored by the stew that he was smelling because he was weary, right? So he didn't have to succumb to the temptation to now fulfill the desires of his flesh in that moment. That's a word for somebody. Some of us will now, uh, we will mess up our life because we want to fulfill the level of flesh that we have at that particular moment, an impulse, a desire that we have for that moment, and we will mess up our lives and have so many different ramifications and consequences coming in our lives because we don't want to deny our flesh in the moment. And we can miss the overall blessing that God could give us in the long term if we will have some level of delayed gratification, but we want to gratify ourselves in the moment right then, and we'll end up satisfying ourselves in a moment for that temporary impulse and miss the blessing on the, on the opposite end of what it means to really be able to have some level of restraint. And that's the worst thing that we can do is allow our restraint to be thrown out the window or out the door so that we can fulfill our gratification, our desires, our pleasures in the moment. He even exaggerated the feeling that he was having in that particular moment. He was exaggerating. He was saying, oh, I'm about to die. No, you weren't about to die. But what, what we would do, we would over-exaggerate the feeling that we have in that moment so that we can get what we want. We can get what we want. Don't make a decision based on a temporary desire. Don't make a decision that can end up being disastrous for your life just because you have a desire in the moment. Esau has a desire in that moment of just wanting something to eat. If he came from the field, couldn't he have waited, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes, an hour to have food cooked for him so that his desire could be fulfilled, but he still has his birthright. So we have to understand that, that, that this, 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 this thing, we cannot... We cannot make permanent decisions based on temporary desires. All right. And look what happens. Jacob says, swear to me, verse number 33, swear to me of this day. So Esau swore to him and sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. Wow. He sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. That his birthright had no value, no more value than something that he was putting in his stomach. 
It didn't seem important to him in that moment. And he was willing to sell his birthright for a bowl of stew. And Jacob gave Esau, verse number 34, bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Verse number, uh, and then the end of that verse 34, thus Esau despised his birthright. My brothers and sisters, we're done. But just think about that. Don't ever put yourself in a situation because of a temporary desire where you will now forfeit the blessings and benefits and the spiritual edification of God for your desire in that moment. That, that that is so, 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 we, it cannot be stressed enough that we would put a temporary desire, an impulse that we have in that moment. That person may look good to you. You may want to go ahead and, 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 and take a sample. But is that sample going to be so detrimental to your life? to where your life could not end up being where it could have been had you had trust and stayed steadfast and been had some level of temperance and patience and endurance and delayed gratification in that moment. That's enough, my brothers and sisters. I pray that this, this, this study has been beneficial to us, that God continues to bless us, through this time that God will show us even in this time that that guess what these lessons that we're learning through the scriptures is a way to help challenge us and charge us convict our hearts to continue to stay the course for the kingdom of God the only way we can have true authority in God is we have to be subject to his commands and his precepts and not be so impulsive or so focused on our own personal desires and pleasures that we miss being able to be obedient to what God has said. All right. As we close, uh, there are multiple ways to give. We want to make sure that we give the opportunity for you to give. I'm thankful tonight that God has blessed us through this Bible study, that he continues to strengthen us through his word, give us clear cut examples of how we should live and that it would be beneficial for our life when we apply the wisdom of God, the word of God into our lives and take it, digest it, learn from it, grow from it, help develop ourselves by being able to allow these principles to be a part of our lives. So if you wanna give, please give, please give. We're asking that you give. We pray something was said tonight that is beneficial for us, that we will continue to grow and that we would even get more and more from the word of God so that the word of God can continue to bless our lives and give us what we need so that we can continue on this journey that God has for us. So please give. We want to, we want you to give. We want you to give as you give. We know that we cannot beat God giving. So please give uh, multiple ways. Send it to our, our website, our app, push pay, text to give, mail, whatever the case is that you would give. And as you give, I pray, my prayer is that God's blessing, increase, expansion will be on your life through your obedience to God as you give. Let's, and as we come to a close, don't, don't let us not forget what's taking place. Uh, we know that we have our uh, uh, drive up prayer, our drive up prayer that's, that's taking place um, um, on Saturday. Um, I think it's at, at 10, 10 30. Um, well, please come out and be a part of that. Also, we have our, our health care initiative that's going to take care, uh, that's going to take place on Saturday, um, uh, also in our fellowship hall. Um, and so Morehouse School of Medicine, we're partnering with Morehouse School of Medicine, Bar McGilead, and other organizations. Please come out. That starts, I think, from 10 to 2.30, from 10 to 2.30. So please be a part of that. Please be a part of that um, and, and listen. And then we come back 
um, on Sunday and we fellowship and worship together, that God will give us strength, that God will give us guidance and direction as we're continuing to do the will of the Father. Um, and so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this Bible study. I'm thankful for you being a part. Um, and so as we pray, we'll close out and let God continue to lead us and guide us. Father, we thank you for this time. Father, use these words that have been presented uh, in your word, that your word will give us guidance, direction. Your word will give us revelation. Your word will convict and challenge us to be all that you've called us to be. And Father, when we go through the rest of this week, as we endeavor to be a part of all that you're doing, that you would direct us, that you would guide us, and we would be obedient to your word. This is our prayer. Bless us until we meet again. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week.